Oscilloscope Basics. Here's a homework problem on the subject. Figure 2 is a good starting point. The oscilloscope measures voltage versus time. The oscilloscope screen is divided into divisions with each division approximately one centimeter. Eight divisions vertically. Ten divisions horizontally. Each vertical division measures a certain voltage. From five millivolts per division to five volts per division. Each horizontal division measures a certain time from 0.5 microseconds per division to 0.2 seconds per division. And all these values can be magnified by 10. Make all the calculations before using the oscilloscope. For a given frequency and a given amplitude, Remember that amplitude is the voltage from zero to peak, not peak to peak. Calculate the period. Period is inverse frequency. Ideal oscilloscope vertical setting is 9.34 volts divided by four divisions. That gives 2.335 volts per division. The ideal oscilloscope horizontal setting is 2.51 milliseconds divided by 10 divisions. That's 0.2513 milliseconds per division. If the oscilloscope had these ideal scales, then one full sine wave would fit perfectly on the oscilloscope. Two volts per division and five volts per division are the closest vertical settings to the ideal 2.335 volts per division. Therefore, the best oscilloscope vertical setting is five volts per division, which is one larger than the ideal. Point 0.2 milliseconds per division and point 0.5 milliseconds per division are the closest horizontal settings to the ideal point 0.2513 milliseconds per division. Therefore, the best oscilloscope horizontal setting is point 0.5 milliseconds per division, which is one larger than the ideal. The actual vertical divisions for the desired sine wave amplitude is calculated, and the actual horizontal divisions for the desired sine wave period is calculated. We have here a function generator. It's creating the signal. We have here an analog oscilloscope. It's measuring the signal. We'll start with the end result, that is, we've already calculated for our particular signal that the best oscilloscope vertical measurement should have 5 volts per division and also 0.5 milliseconds per division. 5 volts per division is accomplished on this knob provided that the variable knob is turned fully counterclockwise. And the 0.5 milliseconds per division is accomplished on this knob, provided that the cal knob is turned fully clockwise, and the X position times 10 button is not pulled out. All right, those are the best settings for the oscilloscope to achieve the desired uh, 9 volt amplitude and
and 398 hertz signal. Now, after making the adjustments, we expect to see the amplitude of 1.86 divisions. There it is, 1.86 divisions for the amplitude. And we also expect to see 5.03 divisions horizontally for one cycle. And there it is, 5 point plus divisions for one cycle. That's the end result. In the next segment, we'll see how to rotate all of the dials on the function generator and the oscilloscope in order to achieve that. It's important to remember that the function generator creates the signal and the oscilloscope measures the signal. The amplitude knob on the function generator changes the amplitude. See the amplitude knob changing the amplitude? The offset knob inserts a DC component in addition to the AC component by pulling the knob out and then rotating it a positive DC component and a negative DC component can be added to the AC component. In this exercise that knob should be depressed. We're not going to deal with the sweep generator. The function generator uh, the function knob on the function generator selects a type of signal. Right now a sine wave signal is selected, but a square wave signal could be selected by moving it one notch over, and there's a square wave. Uh, one more notch over, and that's a, um, a pulse. And then going back the other way, uh, there's a triangle function creating a triangle wave. And one more notch counterclockwise will create a, um, looks like similar to a sawtooth. Okay, so moving this back to sine wave function. The last knobs are the uh, frequency adjust knobs. We have two. We have this one in conjunction with that one. This is the range knob. This number on this scale, which is covered up conveniently right now, um, turning that knob will change the frequency. Whatever number is underneath the cover multiplied by the range value will result in a particular frequency. Okay, changing the range from 1,000 to 10,000, that's the frequency adjust. That is how to adjust the frequency, these two knobs. We'll not discuss any of the other features. It's important to know that the signal coming out of the function generator comes out there. Another video describes the function of every one of those knobs. I'll not repeat that here. Currently, all the knobs are in the desired position. All of the push button knobs are out. All of the rotation knobs are approximately half scale. This one isn't being used. All of the rotation knobs are approximately half scale with the exception of the variable knobs. This one, the cal knob, the variable calibrate knob must be fully counterclockwise in order for these numbers to be meaningful. In addition, 
this cowl knob must be fully clockwise in order that these numbers be meaningful. So all of the knobs that rotate should be approximately in the halfway position. The coupling uh, source levers should be up because we're taking our channel in our signal into channel 1 and we want AC coupling. The AC DC ground switch is extremely important. I'll not repeat that here, but understanding the function of that is critical to using the oscilloscope. When the student receives the oscilloscope, it will be completely in a complete disarray. All of the knobs will be turned in the wrong direction, all of them. The buttons will be in the wrong positions. It will be the student's responsibility to readjust all of the knobs to make a valid reading. That will demonstrate the student's ability to manipulate the oscilloscope knobs to achieve the desired measurement. There exists an initialization that will make all the other adjustments much easier. Let me demonstrate. Notice as I change the frequency, as I change the frequency, I'm changing the frequency. Notice as I change the frequency, the starting point is tied to the origin. Call it the zero, zero point. Notice as I change the frequency, the starting point of the sine wave does not move. That's a very handy feature. And in order to accomplish that, we do the following. If we place the ground switch and then move the starting position at the first vertical grid line exactly like that, then allow the signal in and adjust the trigger level, adjust the trigger level so that the triggering occurs right at the zero, zero point then all of the other adjustments will be very easy.